welcome to Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast. This is an actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Royalty free music provided by Kevin McLeod, Michael Gelfi Studios, Platon All Games, and Tabletop Audio. And now, to adventure. Hello, listeners. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Knights of Roleplay. I'm DM Chris. This session is being recorded over Zoom. This is the first adventure from my homebrew campaign called Dragon Birth, which takes place in my homebrew campaign setting called Harkenrath. I recorded an intro to Harkenrath in my campaign. Please enjoy the following intro. The Beginning of All Things the burgeoning. Before time began, there was a black void, inside of which was the flow of magic. It was an ever-changing mass of energy, sometimes as small as a river pebble, other times the size of many worlds. It was formless, shapeless, and without purpose. Then one day, Part of the flow coalesced. It formed a solid mass in the shape of a sphere. The energy from the flow fed the sphere, which grew until the first world was born. The flow created the land and the sea, the mountains and the rivers. It created the plant life and all the creatures that would live on that world. Once that world was created, some of the flow remained, tightly woven into the fabric of all things. This event gave the flow meaning and purpose, and it created many more worlds. Then the flow created stars, and combined them with groups of worlds to form solar systems and galaxies. The void became the universe. The Gathering On worlds containing intelligent creatures, they began to gather together to form small groups. Those groups became tribes. Tribes became villages. Villages became towns. Towns became cities. Civilization was born. As civilization grew, Its greatest thinkers gave rise to many great inventions. Wood was used to make carts and wagons, then shelters and homes. Fire was used to cook food and later to forge steel. Steel was used to make armor and weapons. Oil was used to fuel lanterns and later as a siege weapon. Animals were domesticated and agriculture was developed. The Enlightenment The intelligent species that populated many worlds wanted their lives to have a deeper meaning. They looked for something in the universe greater than themselves. They looked for guidance from the unknown. The flow responded and created the gods, as well as many powerful entities possessing godlike abilities. Religions grew around the gods, and pantheons formed. Some powerful entities became patrons for those seeking knowledge and power. Gods and patrons granted the use of magic to their followers, allowing them to use the flow in their names. Other species discovered the flow of magic through diligent study, and dedicated their lives to unlocking its secrets and documenting their findings in books. Others learned to manipulate the flow using only the power of thought. The World of Harkenrath The Platinum Age The World of Harkenrath began its life made from pure liquid platinum. As it solidified into a sphere, 
channels remained on its surface, channels where rivers of liquid metal flowed. Over many millennia, crystals formed in the metal surface of Harkenrath. The liquid metal rivers carried deposits of crystals through its metal lands and into multicolored liquid metal oceans made up of metals such as gold, silver, and copper. Flora and fauna were made of organic metal. The entire world shined with a dazzling brilliance. The Colossi. During the Platinum Age, the only humanoid species to exist on Harkenrath were the Colossi. They were gigantic creatures made of metals such as gold, silver, copper, and bronze. Colossi made from the same type of metal often shared similar traits, such as personality quirks, drives, motivations, and general outlooks on life, but there were many examples of individuals who did not conform to these stereotypes. The Colossi lived in enormous metal cities that covered almost the entire surface of Harkenrath. The Colossi were peaceful by nature and never warred with each other. They lived on Harkenrath for many thousands of years until the Reformation. The Reformation. Harkenrath has three moons. In the past, it had only one. The event that caused the change is known as the Reformation. For reasons that are still unknown, the moon reformed into three moons, which changed the flow of magic, thereby changing the world of Harkenrath in countless ways. Scholars estimate the Reformation took place over a period of several thousand years. In the early part of the Reformation, the platinum landscape became twisted and bent. The liquid metal rivers and oceans boiled. The sky rained acid. The most tragic change was the destruction of the Colossi and the other metallic flora and fauna that existed at the time. Many were destroyed by acid rain, some fell to pieces, others became a solid mass, and some spontaneously rusted into nothingness. During the latter part of the Reformation, organic material came into existence. Most of the metal surface of Harkenrath was slowly transformed into rock and soil. Organic flora and fauna came into existence and spread quickly. The platinum world turned into grasslands, swamps, forests, jungles, deserts, and mountains. The liquid metal rivers and oceans turned into water. Intelligent organic humanoids came into existence and quickly joined together to create their own civilizations. Dragon Birth Tens of thousands of years after civilizations of organic creatures began to spread across the surface of Harkenrath, the chromatic dragons appeared. Along with the dragons came the dragonborn species, all of whom are also chromatic. Chromatic dragons are the only type of dragon that exists in Harkenrath. The recorded history of Harkenrath starts in the year 1 AD which means after dragons. The time before is known as BD, or before dragons. Harkenrath's calendar has 12 months, each one named after one of the first 12 dragons to appear in Harkenrath. Each month has four weeks, weeks have seven days, and days have 24 hours. A calendar year is 336 days. The names of the months are Armathrax, Vaisanthor, Chargaroth, Dayanax, Amanarch, Gormanon, Helishar, Iazel, Chrysalith, Sermarath, 
Valerix, and Zatarish. It is said that an evil five-headed dragon named Tiamat exists, and that she is the queen of the chromatic dragons. Her existence, however, has never been confirmed. Many of the earliest chromatic dragons were a menace to society, attacking towns and cities while looking for food and gathering valuables to fill their treasure hoards. On the many continents of Harkenrath, the humanoid species fought these dragons with magic and held them at bay. On the island continent of Iador, the attacks were stopped after the dragonborn species struck a deal with the five dragons who claimed Iador as their territory. The dragonborn promised that the humanoid species would pay a regular tribute to the dragons. As a result of this bargain, the dragonborn quickly became the ruling faction on Iador. They worshipped the dragons like gods. Most of the towns and cities on Iador now lie within the territory of a single chromatic dragon. Each territory is called a province. There are five provinces designated by a color name corresponding to the ruling dragon. The provinces are white, blue, black, red, and green. White province is covered in snow and ice. Blue province is a region of islands in a mostly landlocked ocean. Black province is swampland. Red province is covered by mountains, and Green Province is a lush forest. The provinces border the continent and extend inward from the ocean to the central city of Shakar. Shakar is sometimes referred to as the Granite City since it is constructed on a massive shelf of granite. Many of Shakar's central structures are made from granite, while the remaining structures are usually built from stone or wood. The provinces collectively encircle Shikar, where Iador is ruled by a dragonborn council, sometimes referred to as the Council of Scales, or simply the Council. A dragonborn of each color sits on the council. Each dragonborn council member oversees the local government of the towns and cities that exist within the province of the dragon with which they share a color. At the end of each month, the council sends dragonborn enforcers to collect the tribute. The tribute is 20% of the earnings of all businesses and 10% of all wages earned by workers. Half of the tribute goes to the council. The other half goes into the horde of the local dragon. In private, the residents in most provinces often refer to the tribute as the dragon tax. However, one must be careful that a dragonborn working for the council does not overhear the phrase being spoken, or they risk imprisonment. Throughout its history, the council has often been described as ruling with a heavy hand, with many of its members delighting in their perceived power. Many dragonborn citizens hold positions that answer directly to the council, and far too often these individuals view themselves as being in a similar position of power. However, many other dragonborn seek to live in peace and harmony with all the residents of Iador. Some dragonborn are enforcers, while many others hold a variety of command positions in the military force known as the Dower Guard. The Dower Guard spend most of their time as law enforcement in the various provinces but they also routinely engage in combat exercises to sharpen their skills. The Dower Guard are called upon to defend the provinces against attacks from threats, such as hostile creatures from the mountains or nighttime raids by denizens from the Underdark. The local dragon will sometimes fend off threats as well, but only if the threat is substantial enough to catch its attention. Even with the difficulties relating to the rule of the Dragonborn, Life in the provinces offers a certain amount of safety from outside threats, and most citizens get along just fine. It is now the year 3252 AD. 
For more than 3,000 years, the dragons and the dragonborn have ruled. In the last two centuries, the populace of Iador has grown increasingly frustrated with living under the rule of the Council of Scales and their dragon counterparts. In the last 20 years, riots have become more common. Dowerguard used to patrol the streets in pairs. Now they patrol in groups of six. Unanswered crimes against citizens of Iador by power-hungry dragonborn have increased. The situation is becoming more volatile with each passing year. And this is where our story begins. And we're back. Before we get into the adventure, I'd like to have uh, each of the players describe your character, uh, their race, class, appearance, etc. And um, after your description, I would like you to uh, describe a defining or pivotal moment from your character's uh, past by means of a flashback. Um, and, you know, if anybody is really not comfortable with that, that's okay. We can skip it. But if you're cool with it, I would love it if you could do that because I'm not sure how much of the um, backstories I'll be able to fit in. So if your flashback is relevant to your backstory, it might give us some fun information about your characters. So uh, let's see. Why don't we start with, um, let's see, who's at my top left is Greg. Greg, if you want to unmute yourself. Figures and, uh, it would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just starting the top left and going around. Uh, all right. But uh, but why don't you just describe a little bit about your character? You know, all, all the all the mechanical stuff, uh, and then maybe give us a little bit of, of a flashback of a pivotal moment in your character's life. Okay, I am playing Erebus Amtethis, and he is a dragonborn. He, however, he started out as a half elf. And he is a um, fighter, which is a very different class for me to play. Uh, so I'm looking forward to attack, 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 attack <laughs> uh, multiple times. Um, he is a blue dragonborn, um, which that happened via magical means. And he bears a, a scar on one of his eyes. Uh, that is part of a consequence that he inherited in his transformation. Um, so he had been uh, wanting to basically um, feel the adventure bug. So once his transformation happened, uh, he then therefore um, began adventuring in the wider world and experiencing uh, different things than what he had growing up. So that is Erebus. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So. And flashback? Oh, yeah. Did you want or to do, do that afterwards? Um, after everyone introduces themselves. Why don't we do it at the same time, just so that we kind of keep things in, in, in context? Okay. So um, I will do that. I remember it like it was yesterday. I had looked into the mirror, and the face I saw was different than my own. I saw a stranger that didn't feel familiar at all. I had blue skin now. That was new. I had these claws and teeth. New, new, and new. The one thing that was remarkable, though, was in looking at myself in the mirror, my eyes felt the same, even though I didn't look the same. I could see myself somewhere deeper within the image of myself I did of course smash the mirror and who couldn't wouldn't have done such a thing looking at themselves as kind of a monster now but I was free now and was feeling I had never felt before I didn't have to go back to a humdrum horrible life I could do and be whatever I wanted to be as I went through the window I didn't look back and haven't since you can say that that was the day Alistair died and Erebus was born. My name came from the streets on which I lived, a fitting way to start a new life. That was the start for me of adventuring far and wide, and up until this day, um, I could still look back on that moment as one that defined the character of who I am now. Cool, cool, cool. 
Uh, let's see. So let's go to that. That was very good, Greg. Um, let's head over to uh, John. Why don't you um, tell us about your tell us about your character and then give us a little bit of a flashback? All right. I am playing probably the most vanilla character I've ever actually played, but uh, <laughs> none of but none of you have ever actually managed experienced me playing a shorty before, which is always something that I enjoy. Is I am playing Andy Riverreed, the Lightfoot Halfling Bard. And so, Andy, uh, his uh, I mean, he's a halfling, so of course he's short, uh, uh, brown haired kind of a uh, youthful-looking halfling bard um, and who uses his youthful appearance um, much uh, to his advantage. Um, so eventually, when I get to the point, he is going to be playing a glamour bard. So his his role in the party is going to be mostly, you know, control, support, things like that. Um, he is uh, He's also going to be a little bit of a warlock too which um, ties in much to uh, what happened to Andy actually on his way uh, into town uh, uh, at the start of our adventure you see Andy has been had been traveling for a couple of years now um, he had, uh, mostly just was wandering around as the usual wandering minstrel wanting to see the world because and he is a rather curious sort um, and for and for a couple of years he was you know plying his trade doing uh, look, uh, doing some odd jobs here and there to make a little bit of extra coin but it was while he was walking through the woods on the way to town here that the uh, a sudden fog rolled in and as he was uh, had managed to get himself hopelessly lost in the fog, a uh, um, a dryad suddenly kind of stepped out of the fog. And uh, actually, let me bring that up. So I had notes here. Hmm. Checking notes. <laughs> Check notes. Okay. Uh, as the uh, uh, as it, as the dryad approached him, it spoke and said. These woods are dangerous, traveler, especially as night falls. <laughs> uh, please come out of the fog and entertain me. And if you can, I might be inclined to help you. <laughs> well, of course, poor little Andy didn't really have much in the choice in the matter. He was already hopelessly lost. So he followed the poor dryad back to its tree and uh, spent the night uh, playing for the... Uh, uh, for the uh, little whimsical creature. And in fact, he spent the next three days and nights uh, uh, trying uh, entertaining the uh, poor dryad as it, uh, well, I say poor dryad, as it danced and sang along with him. And after the third day, he basically passed out exhausted. Waking up at the, uh, um, at, um, on a copse in, in the forest, um, he found that he had a little sil he had earned himself a little silver brooch that he now wears on his lapel with a symbol of a uh, little filigreed mirror. And on touching the fruit the uh, uh, the brooch, um, he heard a voice in his head saying, uh, "Well done, mortal. You have stayed off my boredom for a time. I am uh, uh, checking this. I am, I am Venestra, and uh, you may call in my power when you have need. Just know that if I ever get bored again, I just may call on you again, too. And that is how poor little Andy uh, got himself all wrapped up in some rather devious little deities. Okay. All right, cool. All right, uh, let's see, Sarah... Uh, if you wouldn't mind telling us about your uh, race class, all that good stuff, and then maybe a, a flashback of a pivotal moment for your character, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my character is Aquila Moonstone, uh, Aqua for short. 
Um, she is a shardling rogue, or she, I say loosely, um, as shardlings in my mind probably aren't very recognizable as a particular gender. Uh, that's probably true, yeah. And for the <laughs> listeners, that that's a that that is a race that I created for this campaign. <laughs> um, she is very almost translucent in color, um, kind of a opalescent kind of ivory whitish in color. Um, I don't imagine that she has an actual hair, more like shards coming out of her head and uh, violet eyes. Almost like uh, gemstones. Nice. That's about all I have for backstory at this moment, but I do have a pivotal moment. Sure, sounds good. (laughs) I'm in the lab, the place of my own birth, and he is there. I've watched him grow over the course of the last six months. The samples they took from me were so small, but they started to grow so fast, and now I stand behind a foggy glass as my makers put him together. These seemingly lifeless pieces of myself suddenly come to life as I watch him come to life. My son. They don't even let me touch him, however. He's whisked away to where all of us go after our quote-unquote birth. As I stand here, still as stone, my melancholy is washed over my face. I must make this world a better place for him. He is me, though he doesn't even know me. Cool. Very cool. If, if you could, um, uh, later, if you could put any sort of backstory stuff on Need to Be On so I can take a look at it, that sounds really cool. I'd like to read it and, and absorb it a little better. <laughs> That's very cool. Okay, so Kate, why don't you uh, give us some information about your character? Uh, class and race and maybe uh, a flashback of some pivotal moment in your character's life sure okay so i am playing um zatalia or z uh willow tower uh she is a root folk monk uh, so i mean appearance wise for those in the group she is the seven foot tall tree basically um, trees don't wear very much clothing, although if you knew enough about town, you would see that she's wearing um, kind of like a sash shawl, very minimalist robe thing that identifies with a, a monastery that's in Shakar. Um, and she has glowing green eyes along with being a tree. So um, background, uh, she grew up with the Rootful people in the forested province of Iador. Uh was not a typical patient, quiet, <laughs> well-behaved tree, so got sent to the monastery because they thought that that was going to whip her into shape. Uh, it didn't. Um, so she ended up basically uh, skipping out on classes, you know, being the class clown and not really the best student, and eventually fell in with um, three other people from the monastery who were kind of these uh, sages who like to hang out at bars a lot but they were useful and capable, so the monastery had never kicked them out. So they kind of took her under her wing. Um, So that kind of gets her to the point where she's at. So the the flashback that she would have is this uh, incredibly strong memory of being just like, you know, reject from her people, not a good tree, not a good monk, in trouble with the monastery, not in good standing. So she she went to a bar and... uh, got drunk and does what any angsty young adult would do when they're drunk at a bar which is pick a fight with the whole bar and you know if you can picture Groot swinging big long limbs everywhere that was her and she was getting increasingly angry and these three sages who she had never met before showed up there's a let's see Dargan the dragon folk uh, the big old giant Talos the gargoyle and uh, Glamdring the, the hill dwarf little short stubby guy and yet all wearing the same robes from the place where she was training and uh, when you, say, when you her... say dragon folk, do you mean dragonborn? 
yeah, Dragonborn. Sorry, I can't talk, and I That's can't okay. write either. It's yeah, for the listeners. Katie's in playing. <laughs> Katie's playing a root folk, which is another custom race that yes. I made for the campaign. Uh, yes. Continue, honey. So basically, you know, these these three very different characters all wearing the same shawl or robe from the monastery who stepped in on the fight. I basically told her that she was way too angry and not having enough fun. And as she got angrier and swung at them harder and harder and harder, they moved faster and faster. And somehow they were dodging all of her 15 foot tree limb blows and using her own blows against her. Uh, And when she finally collapsed on the floor, uh, completely wiped out, they basically laughed and, and told her that life was too short to be that angry and to not have fun. And they offered to take her under their wing. So that is how she fell in with those three and started training as a, what's eventually going to be a drunken master monk. This is going to be an interesting yeah. switch from you from your usual super serial characters. Mm, yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you everyone for describing your characters and giving a, a flashback of a pivotal moment. Um, so... As our adventure begins, the date is Chargaroth 16th, 3252 AD. You are all located in the capital city of Shikar, on the island continent of Iador. After receiving a mysterious note in your living quarters, you all went to Barton's provisions at midnight. You are in a room with Barton and his daughter, Ophelia. She has the same dragon claw birthmark that each of you have. Barton told you that she is the key to overthrowing the rule of the Dragonborn Council. Ophelia says, I had, vis- I had visions of each of you. I saw your dragon claw birth- birthmarks and knew you were somehow important. I told my father where to find you, so he tracked your movements and left notes for you to meet us here. I have also been having visions of an excavated pit in White Province. This pit is carved from the ice, with narrow walkways leading down to a black metal surface with a crack in it. This place holds a great significance for reasons that are unclear to me. I believe there is an object of great power in this place, an object that is important in overthrowing the rule of the Dragonborn Council, but I don't know what the item is or what power it holds. So adventurers, how do you respond? This sounds like the uh, makings of another uh, great little st- uh, story for me to tell. Uh, so, uh, do you know anything about where this pit might be located? I'd love to see it for myself. It looks uh, fascinating. Uh, Ophelia says, uh, I, I, I can give you um, some loose directions, and um, I will be able to communicate with you telepathically. See, I... I have the ability to see things and I have visions of, of things that are very important and things maybe to come. I'm still trying to understand. I've only had these abilities for, for a short time. Uh, and you, and you all would probably guess she's about 20 years old. Um, and she says, uh, it's only been uh, a couple of years since I, I've really started to have a lot of these abilities and there is some sort of a connection with the dragon claw birthmarks that we all share uh, that will allow me to um, sort of I, I think it'll allow me to sort of sense you and and possibly perceive things through you and communicate telepathically even over great distances and she stops talking with her mouth and you hear in your brain um, she says, can you all hear me and understand me? And this is, this is telepathically. So, um, she says that in your minds to, to how do you respond to that telepathic communication? Fascinating. Absolutely. I can absolutely hear you. So what else is it that you've seen? Um, did you, you, you say you could see through our senses. I, mean, I hope you didn't see that thing. Uh, I, uh, um, last week with the, uh, you know, no, n- never mind. Um, so, did, uh, what else have you seen? What what that kind of cool visions have you had? Anything uh, having to do with us? Anything else having to do with, dra- with the dragons? Anything having to do with uh, the uh, White Tower over? Yeah, the East Card. I've I've been kind of curious about that one. 
Aquila see. just jumps back like, oh my god, why are you in my head? <laughs> are you speaking out loud, Andy, or are you thinking back towards her? Oh, I'm speaking aloud. Okay. <laughs> Um, and Erebus says, this one is going to be a talker, isn't he? <laughs> uh, Ophelia um, uh, says out loud, she says, I've, I've had like visions of like, of like claws and, and, and wings and just sort of flashes of, of various things. And, and you, all, you, you all recognize that because you've all had those similar flashes uh, in, in, in your brain. Uh, in, in your minds or, or over time uh, recently. Um, I mean, claws and wings and various things, they seem quite normal considering <laughs> this six foot tall rock is just staring down at this tiny thing <laughs> that won't stop talking and singing and like... <laughs> You're quite loop. frivolous, aren't you? you? <laughs> Just in the moment, my dear. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, moments are moments, aren't they? Ophelia says, um, the the excavated pit is in White Province, and um, if you if you head directly in to White Province, heading heading west, uh, there there's going to be. Uh, two towns along your stop and then you're going to head uh, southwest from the second town and I will be able to sense where you are in relation to this this pit that has some kind of significance the place where you need to go and I will do my best to guide you through uh, telepathy because I, I believe that there is no limit to the distance in which I can communicate telep- uh, telepathically with people who have the birthmark. Where, where do you get all this feeling? Do you mean like, these uh, imperfections that they told me I had in my crystals? Uh, you're referring to um, Aqua's birthmark? Which yeah. Would, which is sort of like yeah. carved into the crystal of your body? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, I mean, she nods her head. Yes, yes, that, that is what I'm referring to. So have you met anybody else that has these uh, birthmarks other than us? Where are you getting all this information that you think you, you can uh, do all this uh, really fascinating long-distance communication stuff like that? Is it just a feeling that you have, or you have actually tried to do it before? Well, as as I've said, I've been able to... I've had visions of all of you, and, mm-hmm. and I've been able to see flashes of where you were at certain points in time. Um, sometimes I saw things through your eyes. Sometimes I heard things through your ears uh, but but I, I'm trying to gain control over these powers that are still relatively new to me Erebus is just standing in the corner with his arms folded just like <sighs> all of this is just very very interesting <laughs> <laughs> well if a, if a pretty maiden like yourself is looking over little me I suppose that I can live with that for a little while um, and besides, I don't think I've ever actually been to White Province yet. I've only kind of uh, hung around uh, mostly Green Province, but it'd be really so. Yeah, I'd, I'd be going, willing to go see if I can find this place. I mean, I think it'd be uh, uh, really fascinating to try to find that. See what's going on there. Um, All right, let me go get my stuff. <laughs> okay, so I mean, she gives you the names of the towns, and she and she gives you the bearing on on which mm-hmm. way to go. Um, uh, like what? What is your preparation before you leave? I mean, you know that White Province, um, the, the the provinces are white, blue, black, red, green, and the White Province is covered in snow and ice. Uh, you know that they're the White Dragon um, is um, is the dragon that sort of presides over that area. Uh, and you know, John, you said that your character was from Green Province, which is largely forest. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Based on what you know of our province, um, how are you preparing before you leave? To, uh, what kind of things are you doing? Um, I'm thinking cold weather clothing is the first yeah. obvious thing. Yep. Supplies. Yep. Um, uh, how, what kind of distances are we talking? Like days of travel, things like that. Um, approximately. Um, uh, Ophelia, Ophelia is guessing um, that it's going to be about three days of travel. 
Okay, so probably so a week's worth of rations should be plenty of fine. And I think I've got that. Oh, uh, you had mentioned something about the potions um, that we can only have a certain amount at a time. No, I just you're talking about potions of healing. Yes. No, I just I had said in the session zero that magic items I was going to try to keep them pretty rare, uh, but that you could still buy um, healing potions at. Um, some like shops and apothecaries I, I just had said that like I wasn't going to allow you to buy like 10 at a time you know okay. I just I Limited wanted to keep things yeah, so if yeah, you just, get a just, couple then that, that that's fine yeah. uh, did I miss something did we have like a certain starting amount of money in our inventory as far as stuff like that or no uh, I mean you have your starting gold and the 100 yeah. gold pa- in the pouch oh that's right 100 gold Dirty. yeah 100 gold um, which was from her father uh-huh. um, f- from, from Barton and okay. um, I'm, I'm going to say that you each already have a healing potion, just a basic healing potion. You each already okay. have one. I will drop that in. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Basic healing potion. Yeah. Which is, potion I, have, I think it's 2d4 plus healing. 2. I think okay. is, what it, is what it heals. But if you're using the Indie Beyond, you can probably just look for potion of healing. You should be able to find it and put it in your inventory. Okay. Potion of healing. That one's white and not green or blue or anything. Potion of healing. Okay. I, don't know what, I don't know what you're talking about with the colors, Greg. <laughs> oh, like in D and D Beyond. Oh, I don't know. I don't white, know. White, green, like. <laughs> blue, purple. Yeah, yeah uh, there, there's different colors for potions that are like different types of. Yeah. Gotcha. All my players are on D and D Beyond, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of half and half right now. <laughs> uh, um. Okay. So, you, so, you, so you have you have you have a potion of healing. You're, you're gonna uh, pick up some cold weather gear. Uh, I will have to look up some price. I can look up the prices for that. Yeah, I, I mean, if I mean, if you want to say, if you want to say that you each that you each spend like a gold piece to get to get some cold weather gear, you know, like heavy wool cloak or something, um, you know, hoods, things like that. Uh, it's an actual. It's an actual thing. Uh, is there something cool. actually called cold weather There's gear? Clothing, cold weather. It costs ten gold. Oh, ten gold. Okay. I was cutting your break, but okay, it's ten gold. It's ten okay, gold for gold. No, you. you cannot make this easy on us. <laughs> hey, you just <laughs> cost us nine gold. My God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you each spend ten gold on cold weather gear. Got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Obviously, we've got ten days of rations. So, uh, do did she? Does she know how many days journey it's going to be? Three. Three. So, ten days should be enough for there and back. Oh, and with the, the with tree, an extra trees day or two. don't even need to eat or drink as long as they get enough sunlight every day. But we'll see. Good. I'll take your rations. Okay. I'm also gonna grab a healer's kit, just in case, because I mean, okay. I'll have a little bit of healing. Sometimes it may not be enough. So, sure, sure. I think one on it's only five gold. Okay. Wonder if our rogue would want a uh, climber's kit just in case, because we are going someplace very icy. <laughs> uh, I mean, if... sure. If you guys think I might need it, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's twenty-five gold though, so kind of expensive mm. at this point. Eh. So up to you. Monk will get one too. Why not? Maybe. Although maybe being a shardling, maybe you don't need one. You got spikes makes her own climbing gear. I don't <laughs> think it works that way. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I can make my own daggers, but I don't know if those work as climbing gear. <laughs> you like Spider-Man, fling them out. <laughs> Once they leave my body for a certain amount of time, they disappear. Oh. Um. Yeah, That's I can true. get a climber's kit. Okay. I don't know. Do I need anything like that? I don't think I do. I'll do a climber's kit. That'll still leave me with 80 gold. Cool, cool. Uh, All right. Are people ready to ready to journey? I think uh, we can I think we can zoom. Yeah. Uh, Are you counting ammo just to check for range things? Because I've got no, darts. No, I, I, don't I, really, might... I don't really care okay. about counting ammo. Okay. I'm not gonna mess up any more darts then. Fine. Alright. Um Okay, so as you reach the border of Shikar and White Province, you feel an icy wind begin to blow. As you steel yourself and move forward, 
uh, you encounter snowfall, starting in small amounts at first, but then larger amounts as you go deeper into White Province. Your first day of travel is uneventful, and you arrive at a small town as the sun begins to set. So, uh, Sarah, I would like you yes. to... I would like you to help me name this town. I, I have this idea that I want to try to incorporate into this uh, campaign where I want to allow the players to try to contribute a little bit more to the world building. Um, and this the, cool. this is one of the ideas that I have. So, uh, Sarah, do you want to make up a name for this town? Um, something that you think might be appropriate for a town that is located in the snowy, icy area of White Province. What do you think that would be a good town name for? Hmm. I'm going to write this down. Hello, fantasynamegenerator.com. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a plenty of Game of Thrones references to icy places. Yeah, but I don't want to I don't want to name it from something that's 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 already an intellectual property. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I do forget those things. Middle but, Shard Path. Middle Shard Path. Or how about just Middle Shard? Middle there we shard. Go. Okay. Yeah, keep yeah. simple. Which is which is interesting because you're a shardling. Yeah. Okay. And it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh-huh. Uh. So the town of Middle Shard is where you arrive at the end of your first day of travel. Cool. Uh, let's see. Um, so, let's see. You, um, wh what do you do once you get to this town? The, the sun is setting. Uh, you walk into town. Uh, do you want to do anything in particular? Is there arrive? an inn? Find an inn with a tavern. Uh, and a fire. Look for an inn. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um... Uh, again, as part of doing some uh, different type of world building, I have uh, a book called um, uh, The Game Master's Fantasy Toolkit, which is made by Roll and Play Press. And um, it's just like what it sounds like, Roll and Play. It's this spiral bound book uh, that has all these random tables in it. And I have it open to a page that says Taverns and Inns which uh, looks like it's page 30. So, uh, oh yes, and John has, the, John has the Christmas gift I gave him, which allows him to roll randomly on things, but uh, I'm going to start by, by <laughs> see, seeing what, uh, what end you're going to be by rolling my uh, Knights of Roleplay D20. Uh, so page 30, roll and play, press the Game Master's Fantasy Toolkit. Let's see. Let's uh, not get a, a rundown structure, sir. <laughs> oh, it's 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 a D twelve actually. Where's a D twelve? D twelve. Here we go. So come and stay at first roll is six. Oh boy. <laughs> We're outside. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> table. There is no room at the end. <laughs> uh, uh, number six is is ghouls, like like the plural of ghoul. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's cool. not very and, and then and then the second category uh, is. D twelve, Chris. How long have you played D and D? Are we dying to get in? Uh, oh God! Uh, okay, yeah. so that was perfect. We'll Come on. on that. Okay. So my second roll is the word sword. So you are staying at an inn called the Ghoul's Sword. Okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Piratey. I gotta, I gotta write this up now. <laughs> they're they're killing for more customers. <laughs> it's creepy, but probably fun. Yes. <laughs> a little edgy for my taste. <laughs> okay, so you get it's going to be one of those campaigns. <laughs> uh, so you get rooms at the Ghoul's Sword Inn. Um, well, I well, since we haven't really uh, come across too much. Uh, on our travels, I guess I will just simply be starting with hobnobbing in the common room and making use of my entertainer background to uh, be a little bit to be entertaining of course. Uh, in exchange for a bit of uh, room and board. I'm getting some beer at the, the bar 
Yes, uh, Z is going to be drinking. Yes, <laughs> along with Erebus. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can eyes. find anybody interesting to uh, yep. flirt with. Good evening, ghouls and goils. Oh, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> Allow me to, uh, to make re- all the dad jokes. <laughs> regale you with a uh, <laughs> you know, story is from places far and wide. <laughs> okay, so John, why don't we have you make uh, what I believe is the first roll of the campaign for a player? Okay. Um, why don't we have you make a performance check? I have a performance check. Okay. Kill it. Somebody, somebody do me a favor and look up the the rate to stay. Add it in in D&D Beyond if you have it right there. <laughs> uh, 14 on that performance check. 14? Okay. Yep. So that beats an easy DC. doesn't quite get to the moderate DC. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, what is the what is the various cost to say it? I mean, I think it has... Um, let's listen to someone in the player's handbook, like, depending on if you want... Um, like, like, you know, s- s- squalid or poor, or it has different modest, categories. I think. Yeah. I think modest is two. Is uh, modest is like one gold, gold or something. I thought. Uh, so modest is one gold. It, it's yeah. it's in their uh, character creation sheet. Yeah. I yeah. usually default yeah. to modest because it's easy. <laughs> modest is a gold. Okay. Gold. Um, so John, we'll say that you can, you, you can spend five silver instead of a gold. Okay. But, um, so you kind of get half off of a room because of your performance. Oh. At, I appreciate the thought, but um, how does that play into my actual background feature? Which is what? Uh, entertainer. So, uh, does, uh, what can you perks read, does can that you, give you? Yeah, can yep. you read what it is? Uh, yep. Uh, you can always find a place to perform, usually in an inn or a tavern, but possibly with a circus, at a theater, or even in a noble's court. At such a place, you receive free lodging and food of a modest or comfortable standard, depending on the quality of the establishment, as long as you perform each night. In addition, your performances make you something of a local figure. When strangers recognize you in town where they, where you have performed, they typically think they typically take a liking to you. Okay, well then that, that I would say that would apply. It, it's like you know the rules go from general to spe- to uh, specific. Specific. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so you so you get free room and board for the night because you performed. So so there's really no role necessary. Um, but it's still so cool, could, though. It, maybe. It's so cool. I mean, if you're all really high, maybe I give you an extra bonus. But Right. Oh, yeah. so Andy is a headliner. <laughs> I'm, I'm a party face, yeah. <laughs> so Andy gets free room and board. Nice. Everybody else has to pay. <laughs> That's fine. I'm singing it with the crowd. Everyone's singing. <laughs> Can I try to find someone that looks really rich? <laughs> sure. Why, why don't you make a perception check for me, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Perception. Here we go. That would be a 13, sir. 13. Um, okay, so... That's an that's that beats an easy DC. So I mean, I would say that the people that are here at the Ghoul's Sword Inn um, are not particularly uh, affluent. Is that the word? Uh, not not particularly you know rich. They, they don't have a lot of money. You don't really find anybody who looks that they stand out as being uh, as being a very rich person. Okay. Hmm. I mean, you can still flirt with anybody if you want, but. <laughs> But nobody looks like they'd uh, pay my room for the night. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess it would depend on how how good you would roll on a persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. While they're doing that, I'm talking <laughs> with uh, with Z. Yeah. Well, Z is getting Z is getting buzzed. Uh, <laughs> so she's scared. Gonna, so try to dance with Erebus and any other party member who wants to try to dance with her, which is awkward. And then uh, she's I'm gonna rude. try to pick out the biggest, strongest guy who's in the bar and see if people want to play bets. And she's gonna challenge him to arm wrestling. Oh no! 
<laughs> I thought you were going to fight. <laughs> well, if, if, well, there's still a chance. You <laughs> could... the back of it. <laughs> I see leaves. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um, Debris flying by his head. Yeah. While he's <laughs> <laughs> Slow-mo hand. Erebus so, kind of ducks out of the way. I, I mean, there, there are definitely um, some some strong people that you know have to, that live in White Province. You yep. have to kind of be hardy to be out here in this uh, cold mm-hmm. and ice. So you find somebody who's particularly large. We'll, we'll say, we'll say a uh, half orc. Okay. Mm. And um, you said you wanted to do to, to arm wrestle. Sure. Yep. It'll be arm fun. Wrestling? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, you find a table, and uh, this half orc comes over and sits down and, and puts his elbow on the table. Clunk. Puts his hand <laughs> up. And uh, says, "Well, let, let's let's see what you got." Let's see how we do. All right. So let's let's make a contested strength check. Just roll and add your strength. Strength, five. strength, asle- athletics or athletics? Strength? Yeah, athletics. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Did I mention that's her neck? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Ooh. All right. So what was your total? Ah, uh, so that'll be a twenty-five. Oh, he got a twenty. <laughs> oh. So. Uh, so, so, so you struggle, and at the very beginning, it seems like it's fairly even, and then slowly he starts to lose ground, and then eventually you do get the best of him and uh, slam his his fist down to the table, and uh, he laughs. <laughs> well done, well done. Thank you, you as well. <laughs> I have decided this guy's name is Crush. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Crush the half orc sounds like a good name to me. <laughs> Local nickname. <laughs> Let me make a note of that. Are we hanging out with Crush? <laughs> Apparently. Crush the half oh, Z would completely invite him to come drink with us after. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, yeah he's yeah. he's happy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Erebus is down. Yeah. He's down to parte. All right. Is there anything else you want to do over the course of the evening here? Junkie um, carousing and mayhem, you know. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of stuck performing, so I can't really be doing much in the way of carousing. But uh, that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, keeping an ear open, I guess, for anything about the direction we're heading while I'm playing. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean. So far, um, uh, Ophelia, Ophelia told you the names of the towns, which I hadn't determined yet. So yeah. she told you were going to um, uh, White what did Sarah just say? No, no, no. <laughs> what was the name Sarah just gave me? Oh, uh, uh, she, Mid- Middle Shard. Middle Shard. Middle Shard. Yeah, she thought you were going to Middle Shard and your next destination was insert name here. DBA. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to, to, to be decided. Oh, see, uh, I thought DBA. it was called White Hole. Why did I think that? Uh, You're a White oh. Hole. Oh. No, <laughs> I made brown ones, so there's a difference there. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's the a different The next one region. is White Castle? <laughs> uh, so, um, so, so you know where your next destination is. Yeah, and, and, there, and there's, there, there's basically, um, even though it's it's largely snowing most of the time um, when you're when you're in White Province, uh, there are people that are traveling between the towns. So there's ba- there's sort of like a sort of like a loose a loose road, a makeshift road that goes from people. Um, some of them, some some of them use like dog sleds. Um, Carriages really don't work very well through here. Some people have horses, but um, most most people are on foot. So so there there are paths basically like like makeshift roads that kind of go from town to town. So you know uh, you can continue on the path and go to the next town the next day without a whole lot of difficulty. Okay, I'm mostly mostly though what I'm listening for is um, I mean, a I like listening for stories, okay. um, but b of course I always keep my ear open for uh, any you know, trouble that might be brewing in the area. I mean, have people been coming in complaining about being attacked on the road? Uh, people saying that they they just left this town and you know, and it was in shambles. That kind of thing. Kind Why don't of... you make um? When you make a perception check, I mean, this would be based on on um, on listening. Pretty I don't much. Think you have anything that probably gives you a bonus to that. But uh, if you want to make 
um, a perception check. We can we can see what happens. Okay. Ah, off, out of out of the box. Out of the box. Out of the box. Uh, seven. It's less than <laughs> my pa- it's less than my passive, but I am actively making an attempt. So, whether you want to go with that or my passive is up to you. Um, what's your passive perception? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Um. So you hear somebody. You hear somebody talk about the fact that maybe about a couple of weeks ago that they had they they thought that they saw the white dragon actually flying through the sky. Uh, I mean, again, and there, there, there's so much snow and a lot, a lot of storms, a lot of windy storms and things that are always prevalent in White Province. So looking up in the sky and seeing anything in the middle of like a lot of snowstorms and snow squalls mm-hmm. is difficult. And, you know, it's a white dragon against against the, the white sky. Right. Uh, but someone was pretty sure that they saw the white dragon uh, a couple of weeks ago flying through the sky. Um, that's about the only interesting thing that you pick up with with 12. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Much to follow up on. But yeah. I kind of can't at the moment until I take a break. Uh, so <laughs> I'll let that go for now. Okay. I'm so you guys, back my mind. you guys go through your evening. You you have a lot of fun. You hang out uh, with Crush the Half Orc. <laughs> and um, is there anything in particular that you want to do before setting out on your second day of travel to the second town, which has not have does, does not technically have a name yet? Uh, what is the layout of the town? Do we do we know if there's like shops and that kind of stuff, or is it like small that? It really doesn't have a whole lot of establishments. It's, it, it's pretty small. I mean, this is really the only, the, the only inn in town, uh, is where you're staying right now. Um, they they typically have shops that, you know, sell cold weather gear and things that are appropriate to the region. Um, there are there are homes that are just right right outside, sort of um, sort of circling um, the middle of the town. You know, but there's there, there's like a very small um, sort of town center where the inn is and there's a couple of shops there's not much more than that are you okay. looking for something specific i was just trying to think if there was like a, a shop that might sell um you know items like uh swords and that kind of stuff you know weapons. yeah yeah there's there, there there is basically um there, there is a business there's basically a shop that sells um cold weather gear and um if you go in there and you look around you know, they have a couple of basic items. They have like a shield. They have a couple of basic swords. I mean, they don't, they're not really outfitted um, okay. with, with like a lot of weapons. Um, but what kind of weapon are you looking for? Um, well, since you say it that way, you know, Erebus has, I think, what he needs. Maybe okay. he might be looking for something particular. If, you know, if it doesn't sound like that, that's the case there because it's a smaller selection. Then he probably wouldn't be interested in looking. So he's window okay. shopping. Okay. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, you'd have better luck finding weapons and stuff like that back in Shakar. Um, but uh, and just as a reminder, uh, if you guys want to make um, your your magic item wish list at some point with like, I would say anywhere from one to three items in it. And if you okay. wanted to stick it in your character in D and D Beyond, I try to review the characters before each session, and I'll go into your characters and I'll kind of maybe review your backstory, maybe look at some of your um, class features, see what you can do, and if you have your magic item wish list in your notes section somewhere, okay, um, I can take a look at that and see if I can okay. work it in. How greedy can we be with that wish list? Like, are we talking <laughs> like rare and uh, artifact level stuff? Deck or... of many things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it, I guess it kind of depends. You can You can give me things that are vague, like you can say, like, you know, um, magic sword. If I just saw magic sword, I would assume you wanted like a plus one sword. If you mm-hmm. said I wanted something that had an ability to um, help with my perception, and you didn't say what kind of item it was, then I would make up, you know, an amulet or a ring, or I would look for something in D and D Beyond that that would accomplish that. Uh, I probably wouldn't say, like, you know, I want to find find like the the sword of the Nazgul. You know, or something like that. Um, like, I wouldn't ask for a specific named artifacts because you're first level. Mm. Um, but you know, if you were to say like a sort of great power that that you know um, can heal, then I could I could, pick, 
I can, I can heal everybody by hitting them with my sword. So if we <laughs> add that in the other tab, that's okay. Under notes. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't really know what's available. Yeah, it has yeah. other um, sure, other enemies. Is fine. Okay. Yeah, you want to put it under other and just put like a magic item wish list and then put a couple of things in there. Okay. That would be fine. Um, Sorry, I was yeah. on, at the end of the backstory. Uh, if, you, if you go into the note section in D&D Beyond, sure. Greg said there's there's a there's a place called Other. Yeah, it's like right under yeah. the backstory. Yeah, I have a bunch of my spells printed in there for quick reference, but yes, yeah. Okay. I mean, I you, as stuff. long as it's somewhere in D&D yeah. Beyond that I can take a quick glance at. Sure, I can That's do fine. That. Uh, I will do my best to try to accommodate requests. I, I just wouldn't ask for named hugely powerful artifacts because you're, you're all first level. I want to break your campaign. No sort of cast. <laughs> <laughs> but because this is a shorter, more story-focused campaign, rather than being a little more open-world sandbox, um, you know, I want to be able to try to fit some of this stuff. And you probably won't get to very high level, so you're not going to be getting artifacts that are, like John said, they're going to break the game. So I don't All want right. to do that. Um, so okay, so are we ready to move on to the next day? Are people good? Let's move on as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Okay. So um, you set out on your second day of travel. Uh, and um, Kate. Yes. I would like you to describe an event that happen- that happens during this day of travel. You know, okay. and, and it, it can't be like a dragon flies down and gives me an artifact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I would like you to... I would like you to describe something. I mean, it can be like, I saw a deer. Um, that can be the extent of it. Um, it can be something a little bigger and more interesting than that. Um, but just, you know, don't, don't like add a whole new villain to the game or something. Uh, just do me a favor and just describe something simple but also interesting that occurs as you're traveling to this uh, second town on your second day of travel through a lot of snow and wind, and etc. I don't. I would say maybe don't get into a fight. But as we're traveling, like in the distance, we hear something moving or wrestling, like like maybe like way far in the distance, and basically from a distance, I see some kind of like wondrous ice-based creature, like an ice worm or something, like pops out of the ground, and like we see it way far away. It doesn't notice us. No fight, no conflict or anything, but just. Just something cool we saw. Grit our teeth, watch it carefully, watch it, you know, kind of do its wormy thing, and then go back under the ice and okay. disappear. So, a okay. bit of nature, nature walking. She, she's proficient in nature. She would think that that was cool. So, so, so as you're traveling, you do see off in the distance. It's a, it's hard to make out with, uh, with like the almost constant snow and, and wind, but uh, you do, you, you. Uh, the first thing that you would notice is that you feel kind of a rumbling, and and it's not. It's not intense. It's it's very subtle, uh, but it does draw your attention. And you see off in the distance, sort of in between the gusts of wind and the uh, and the gales of, of snow and things, you see like a large snowy worm creature that um, comes up out of the ground under like a bunch of these herd animals that are out there, um, uh, and basically comes up and eats one of these creatures, and then and, and scatters the rest of the animals and then dies back down into the snow, and and you know. It, it's it's there very quickly. It eats and then and then it's gone, and then you continue on your way. But that's cool. Thank I bet you. For there's that. a whole network of tunnels down there. <laughs> no. Um, secret oh. tunnels. Oh, secret <laughs> tunnel. <laughs> tunnel. <laughs> through the <laughs> ice field. <laughs> secret, uh, secret, 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 secret tunnel. <laughs> I'm going to put him on mute. I like fun, and even I know that's a bad idea. <laughs> okay, uh, so about, about an hour after sundown, you arrive at the second small town uh, that Ophelia, Ophelia gave you the name of, uh, but we will now have John actually name this town. <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm kind of afraid... <laughs> Give me a general uh, description of the town. Is it a large town, little hamlet, in the just kind of in the middle of a field of? Uh, I would of, uh, say that this town is a little bit bigger than the one that you were just in. Like, let's let's say, 
that um, let's say that middle shard was maybe um, let's say middle shard was maybe like 400 people mm -hmm. in this little town um, we'll say that that this town that you're about to name has maybe closer to a thousand people it has mm -hmm. a little bit larger po population a few more businesses um, we'll say it's about a thousand people okay a little bit bigger than middle shard okay so and it's just sprawled houses no walls or no no it's 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 not walled um it, it doesn't have uh any particular well let me see um we'll say that 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 this this town actually has um strangely it has some kind of um tree cover to it whereas a lot of what you're seeing is you're seeing just wide flat open ice and snow mm -hmm. and lots of wind we'll say as you as you approach this place it actually sort of seems to be almost like ringed by by like pine trees you know ever ever evergreen trees surround uh this this town so so that's sort of like the feature that stands out especially given that most of what you see is just plain flat snow and ice Rhymewood Village. Rhyme Wood Village. Cool. I like it. So, Ophelia told you that the second town was Rhymewood Village, and you arrived there uh, a little after sundown, and you moved through the outer ring of trees, and, uh, uh, what is your plan while you're here? Is it the same as before? Like find find a place to stay, stay the night, that kind of a thing. Uh, well, tomorrow it's going. To, our third day is tomorrow, right? Where we're expected yeah. to at least approach our uh, destination. Destination. The ice yeah. pit, right? So yeah. before we yeah before we settle in, I guess yeah I'm going to see if I can uh, do a little carousing at wherever people hold, uh, get together probably at the inn in this right. cold climate and uh, see if I can find any information on a so-called giant ice pit yeah. okay uh, so you are staying uh, I'm going to look at my roll and play press book here and you are staying at it's cocked Uh, you were staying at the Chick and the Chick and Griffin. <laughs> the Chick and Griffin Tavern. <laughs> chick. Is this a two tavern town? <laughs> the logo is strangely a rooster and a griffin combined together. Chick and Griffin Inn. Okay. Uh, See, why don't you do? Um... So Z would actually be helping you on this. I was thinking the same thing as you were saying, it, Andy. Trying to get okay. You want to help? Yeah, okay. trying to help you. Just kind of listen around, not not make too big of a fuss about it. But so, so right now you're just yeah. listening. Well, I mean, are you are you investigating or are you? Uh, no, I'm I'm actually, you know carousing, schmoozing up people, trying to actively get information. And I'll, I'll just this. be kind of, like, listening and see if, like, does someone react to him asking questions and, like, okay, duck out uh, the door? Do you want, do you want to make a um, persuasion? Persuasion. Persuasion okay. check. I can or, do a persuasion um, check. I mean, if, uh, if you want to use performance to say that you're, you don't have to necessarily be singing when you're talking to people, but yeah. if you want to say that, 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 that that's part of your part of your demeanor, part of your your natural uh, way with people. I will say you could use performance or persuasion. I appreciate that, but in this case, I will go ahead with persuasion. Okay. Twenty-two. Twenty. That's my. That's my knack. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, you ask around, and no one has any idea what. I mean, nobody has heard of anything that has anything to do with an excavated pit. Hmm. It, it strikes you a little odd that, that if it's somewhere in the area that somebody wouldn't know about it, but but nobody has any idea. They've never heard of anything 
like what you're describing? Or, or I mean, do you describe it, or do you just sort of um, poke and prod about general rumors? Do you mention it specifically? Um, I would. Yeah, I might as well. I see no reason not to at this okay. point. So, so, so you, I, didn't, you, I don't think it's some big secret. <laughs> right, but but it does appear to you though that strangely you, you mentioned to a bunch of people and like they they have no idea what you're talking about. They have never heard of anything like this. Huh. Especially like um, if you give them the general bearing, um, the, the southwest bearing from from the place that, from the town that you're in, uh, they all tell you that there's nothing out there. Really. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. That's Curious. A, I may have to have a, a hey. uh, talk with uh, my employer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Something on a wild goose chase. Do we believe them? There's the uh, yeah. That's Z's style would be to uh, in her like being goofy, drunk, acting crazy, but then she's secretly kind of keeping an eye on on everything. So if someone's doing something sketch or like reacting to him asking those questions. Okay, what That's is kind of, yeah. what is Andy and Z's passive perceptions? Andy's um, was twelve. Mine's twelve. Yeah. Z's passive is fourteen. Is fourteen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that during the time that you spend talking to people about this pit, uh, it, it it does seem odd that nobody has has heard of it, uh, and I will say that Z, since you have the highest past perception of the of the two of you I will say that l- let's say you talk to maybe like about a dozen people and I would say that y- you get the sense from most of them that they genuinely don't know what Andy is talking about mm. but you get a sense from two of them two separate individuals that that maybe they're not being entirely truthful they basically give you the same, the same line that everybody else says, which is, "Nah, I don't. I've never seen anything. I don't really travel out that way. No one's ever talked about it." But, but you get the sense from from two of the people that maybe they're not being entirely truthful. Mm-hmm. She's got everybody at the table, like somewhere separate. After he kind of asks his question, she's just gonna quietly say, "Yeah, I think those two know something." You think so? Huh? Mm-hmm. Yep. Are we all in the same place? I would assume so. Unless you wanted, wanted to go walk around the town. You're all at the Chick and Griffin Tavern. Or in. Oh, okay. Chick, Chick I'm probably drinking. That's why I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is going to be the an Chick interesting Chick and Griffin in Tavern? Around. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> and and as, as per usual, John, Andy can... Get free room on board for the night. For, for okay, if I if I perform, I, okay. if you perform, yeah. Okay. I'll get to that in a little bit. Z Z might try to challenge one or both of the two who seemed like they knew something to a drinking game. <laughs> she thinks that she could outdrink them, and maybe she hopes that their lips would loosen a bit if they if they uh, attempt to keep up with her. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Just... Okay. Um, so I will say that one of the two has zero interest in doing anything of that sort. They they seem um, they, they they give you sort of a line about being very busy, and they have other things they have to do. Uh, the other person will say is we'll say. We'll say a a dwarven woman. We'll say is uh, I have an NPC dice. <laughs> uh, what what is what is your NPC dice do, John? Um, I can roll for uh, race. race. And class. I can yeah, I can roll for race and class and a quirk. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, tell me what the name of that of that dice set is. Oh, it is the Scrying Stones from DM Scenario DM Scenario Dice. Uh, All right. They sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you roll us up an NPC from drone? Stratagem. Okay. Uh, by, let's by, see. By, by Stratagem? By Stratagem, yes. Uh, it, only has, it only has the six basic uh, races, but it is an elf uh, who is a... Okay. That's... 
quirk dice. Uh, okay, this, this is the job is dice. Uh, Hunter, who is really loud. Mm. <laughs> Elf Hunter is very loud. That's yeah. my kind of woman. Someone to keep up with me. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how this got started. <laughs> I'm like wicked hype. I don't even know why. <laughs> <laughs> Erebus uh, is just watching these crazy women in his party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's drinking with a smile on his face. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to uh, use the Game Master's Toolkit, and I'm going to roll uh, a magical name, since elves will probably want something very interesting. Uh, so this elf's name is Thundry. Thundrin? Thundry. 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 T H U N D R I. Thundry. So that's Thundry talking to a fun tree. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sigh. <laughs> so, so, so. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to be the. I think I'm going to be the wet blanket in this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I'm used to being stodgy, but I'm feeling quite free. I don't even know why. <laughs> so, let's see. So, so uh, Thundry, the female elf hunter, was very loud. <laughs> um, you wanted to challenge them to a drinking game, Kate? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes, yes, I would gladly like to challenge you to a drinking game. <laughs> uh, so, uh, why don't we roll? Hmm. Why do we? What, what can we roll? Is it Constitution? Constitution? De- definitely, definitely Constitution. I'm thinking. Um, okay. Why don't we do uh, Constitution saving throw? Okay. Constitution save. I w- Best out of five. How about that? Okay. Best out of five. Okay. Best out of five. Okay. Um, already, already. Opposed checks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do let's do the first one. Okay. <laughs> aww. I also got aww. Uh, she rolled a three. <laughs> okay. She rolled a one. <laughs> okay. Well, Thundry got a uh, a five. <laughs> okay, that dice is fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, the you first... have a uh, inspiration dice. <laughs> right, I believe me, she's holding that in her pocket. So, best out of best out of five, huh? Yep, so the first yeah. the first one goes to Thundry. Okay. And, uh, she laughs. Ha 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 ha! Can't take your alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Then, uh, Someone right. tap that tree. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, oh, excuse me. Uh, all right. Let's sit here. Okay. So what did you get on the second one? I got an 18. Also 18. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> the rollies? Rollies? Is it rollies? Um, or? Well, let's see. Thunder got the first one. And then well, let's just call the second one a wash because you both were able to do okay on that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're both pounding them quite appropriately. <laughs> Let's move on to the third mug of alcohol. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Not great. Not good. What'd you got? It's not going well. Uh, that'll be a six. Okay, fifteen. Okay. Oh. 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 That's a lot. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because okay. we got one wash. Okay. So. So, yeah, but I mean, she gets three, she wins. So I yeah. am going to burn my inspiration. On this. And he says, ha ha, you're going down. Uh, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> Erebus inches closer All to right. their if you win, arena. If you win both the last ones, you could still you could still pull right. out a win. All right. Well, Here inspiration we on this. Inspiration on this one. Okay. Okay. Whoa. There we go. 20 on one. All right. So 22. 22. 17. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so she so she starts to waver a little bit. <laughs> Her okay. eyes are looking a little bit a little bit funky. 
right. Well, there's no more inspiration left. So here we go, fifth round. Uh, hang on, oh. hang on. So it's two and two. I wonder. Uh, hang oh. on. Oh, could you give her something? <laughs> Maybe. Are we gonna choose this? <laughs> Cheese, cheese away. <laughs> I, um, I, um, since the crowd, I assume, is at this point kind of getting worked up over this. Uh, yes, the, the, um, there is a crowd. This that very is subtle around. seven foot tree and this very loud, yeah. atypical <laughs> elf. What? So, so, I, so I weave into my um, enter into my entertaining um, a bit of encouragement for uh, um, uh, for Z. For Z. Um, and so you get a bardic inspiration, okay. which gives you a d6, d6 on any ability check roll or attack roll or saving throw. Okay. Ooh. Right. Wow. Delicious. Okay, so you're both starting to feel the effects here. <laughs> you're both maintaining your composure. All right. And here we go for the last roll. Here we go. All right. So that's a 20. She got 10. <laughs> so so she says oh that was a good contest that's, that's a tie between them you did so well to win to, to I mean, the each, whole win to or win lose each draw. her goal was to get her engaged and to get her drunk that's true, so that's true. That right. was, yeah. uh... <laughs> so 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 you're both a little snockered <laughs> See the next day if I'm still hungover or not. Yeah, yeah but, but I mean, your goal in the drinking contest was to try to get, you wanted to get more information, is that right? I wanted to see if she would loosen up about this, this pit thing that I suspect she knows something about, even though she didn't say she knew something about okay. it. Okay, so um, so so she she's kind of like, she's kind of like, uh, she, she's moved her chair over to your side of the table and is kind of like leaning on you. <laughs> You're not sure if, if okay. she's being affectionate or if oh. she's just trying to stabilize herself. <laughs> Your big old tree hug, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you, you try to press her a little bit on, on the information about the excavated pit. And she's like, yeah, yeah, there's something out there. Uh, typically, people don't come back. So we don't, we kind of don't bother going there. Because when they do come through and they and they say they're going there, we don't see them again. Yeah. <laughs> you make a great drunk elf, Chris. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> a loud drunk elf. Uh, um. Nobody goes there. <laughs> there you go. Nobody Much. ever goes there. They don't, they don't come back. <laughs> that's the loudness I was looking like for. You're not supposed to say anything loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, there, there? so there are people around that are like staring over there because she's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then she, she, it's really quiet. She goes, "I wouldn't go there." <laughs> You're a good friend. Be Thank careful! Did someone go over there and knock her out? I, I think Ty oh, will do that. She's probably going to pass that on the table. She, 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 she gets up and kind of staggers through the, through the front door okay. of the uh, uh, Chicken Griffin Inn. Is that what it was? Yes. <laughs> Chicken Griffin. Uh, yes. Chick and Griffin. 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 Yeah. Not Chicken Griffin. <laughs> well, that was that was the logo I made up in my head. So it's a chicken combined with a griffin. So that's it now. <laughs> so Erebus goes over and claps uh, Z on the shoulder and says, "Well done." <laughs> I didn't think you were gonna make it, but Does she have a it. shoulder or a bow. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. So John is Andy performing for Women Board? Uh, Andy will be performing tonight. Okay. For your listening pleasure. Uh, okay, did Z Can use Here's Wonderwall. Huh? <laughs> okay, did did Z use that bardic inspiration on that last one? Or uh, second to last one? She she did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She yeah. rolled on the one where she rolled a twenty, she used the inspiration. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. I was just curious because sometimes it helps and yeah. and this yes. case it sounds oh, like I, I rolled a six on the inspiration die. It absolutely made a difference. Yes. So awesome. thank you, Bard. <laughs> and, and Andy's uh, Andy's support and rousing performance. Yes. He was he was he was getting into it, started with you and then sort of uh, moved it out to the entire 
populace yeah. of the room. Okay. Um, I have expertise in performance. Could I join Andy in his performance tonight? Sure, sure. If you wanna, if you wanna have one of you make a, a roll with advantage on performance, uh, you go ahead and roll it. Because strangely enough, I don't actually have expertise in it yet. Well, why don't you uh, roll it, Aqua, uh, Sarah? <laughs> um, roll uh, performance with advantage. Z can play flute, but I don't know if she's going to... She, she might think it's fun to join you, but if you let her, that might hurt you rather than help you. I, I'm carrying... 25. I'm carrying. <laughs> I, 25. I'm carrying a flute. 19 on the <laughs> dice. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, it doesn't take long before the entire uh, in the entire room full of people is, is singing along with Aqua and Andy. I'm shiny. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, shiny. Uh, oh. The half lane and the six foot yeah. chartling. Yeah, to set the theme a little, my my chosen instruments that I carry with me are the lyre and the flute. Okay. Uh, so the lyre is mostly well, what yeah, I play, she, she but I have a flute. Okay. They want to borrow it. She's proficient in flute. Uh, I figured that was appropriate for a tree. She could probably make one from her own branches if she wanted to. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so we'll say that the rest of you. We'll say that the rest of you get free room aboard as well. Oh yeah! Yay! Good job. <laughs> Thank you, friends. You guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> Best night these people have had in a year. Seven foot tree, like, staggering around the room a little bit. Well, I mean, I'm basically a walking disco ball. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, are we good to move to day three? Uh, that yeah, sounds like a so. good night for me. Yeah, I'll go I ahead so. and get my long rest to uh, get my inspiration yeah, back. Inspiration. And, uh, okay. Did you use your inspiration? Did I miss that? Oh, I gave it to you. You gave me bardic inspiration. You yeah, and I only got your... three per long rest. He's oh, talking about his bardic inspiration. I thought you were back. talking about your inspiration inspiration. Oh, no, no, sorry. We, we also get back every long rest, <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, oh, man, I had rolled these. using terms. Over, use overloaded it. terms. Sure, <laughs> we, we have this inspiration thing that we get more now, and I need to yeah. think to use it because it's yeah. cool. <laughs> oh, that's right. We do get it back every long rest. Yes, we you do. do. Yep. That's right. That was to That's encourage right. us to actually use them. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I thought you were going to be really cheesy yes, and exactly, give your Sarah. inspiration inspiration to give it Oh, me. see, that's what I thought he did. He didn't use his inspiration. I, he I think he can only give it to one. somebody if you get at the point you get one and you already have one. Uh, uh, I don't think he can just hand curious. over an inspiration um, that you're holding on to. No, I would say both. I would say if you have it and you gain it, you can give it to somebody else. But I would say that if... If, if, like, three out of the four of you have used your inspiration and somebody that has it left wants to give it to somebody else, I, w- I would allow that. I don't see any reason why. I don't think that's going to be game-breaking. Okay. That's cool. We'll roll with that, then. I mean, Thank especially you. since we said that we have to announce we're using it beforehand. Yeah. Right. It's not right. going to be like, oh, you rolled crappy. Let me give it to you. Right. You know? <laughs> you have to do it ahead of time. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. So you set out on your third day, and you basically had... S- Southwest um, from the town that you're in, <laughs> which was Rhinewood Village. Uh, so, so you head southwest out of the out of the town, out of the village, and uh, let's see. Um, so, I would say somewhere around midday. I mean, the the, the snow is blowing pretty hard. Um, it's pretty heavy and you know you're, you're moving off into the snowstorm and, and all you have is a bearing from Ophelia of which direction to go so it's a little disconcerting because you know you've traveled for half a day through a snowstorm you know there's no town directly ahead of you um, but you have you have plenty of gear with you and uh, around midday as you're moving uh, through the storm uh, a hand uh, bursts forth from the snow at your feet uh, oh, oh. Totally. Then, then another hand, then another. And then shambling undead that are partially frozen stand up from the snow and Ice. attack. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh t- darn. So, but what I'm going to do is, is, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the session right there. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Not even a fight. Cliffhanger. <laughs> Jeez. 
She's um, Louise. And uh, what I would like to do um, is there is this idea that I've that I picked up on recently. There's something called uh, stars and wishes that I would like to do uh, at the end of each of these sessions. And essentially, you know, it's the DM asking for feedback on things. Mm -hmm. Um, Stars are something that you liked in the session. You know, examples could include things like um, really good role play, you know, character, great character moments, um, good descriptions by players or GMs or DMs. Um, maybe the feeling you had at a certain moment, somebody else's generosity, a mechanic of the system that really worked out well or sang during the session. Um, so essentially, you know, stars, it's just something that you liked. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be about anyone or anything, just something that you liked. And then wishes would be something that you maybe would like to see in the future. Examples can include something like, you know, um, you want something particular. You're hoping that something eventually will happen with your character in a certain way. Um, maybe an interaction you'd like to see between a couple of characters, maybe a mechanic you would like to see come into play that you haven't seen yet, Um, places maybe you're hoping that the story might go. You know, it's pretty much like, what did you like and what would you like to see? Stars are what you liked, wishes are what you would like to see. Um, So I'm going to try to use this feedback at the end of every session to kind of maybe curtail future adventures. So... um, so right now, I would like to do uh, stars, stars and wishes with each of you before we end um, on this uh, cliffhanger where you're being attacked by snow zombies. Um, okay. So, 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 Greg, um, what was something that you liked? It, it can be anything. Um, I actually thought it was pretty cool uh, with having the towns being named by us, okay. as well as the um, guy at the bar, Mister Crush. Um, I think that's pretty cool being able to um, take our input directly and do something with it um, at hand versus uh, maybe um, something where in your story per se you have something going on that shows up later so it's an immediate effect versus a long term uh, long term effect sure Uh, is there anything any wishes that you have for the future um I don't think I have anything, only because we're just starting here. Yeah, so. that's fine. I mean, you don't have to give me any answers of any kind if you don't want to. I just want to put this out there. And if everybody's like, no, I don't have any stars and wishes this time, I'll be like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any wishes okay. at this time. Um, John, do you have any stars and or wishes? Honestly, my sentiments pretty much echo Greg's. Uh, star for your world building technique. Um, uh, it's certainly a lot more... Uh, inclusive and emphasizes the cooperative nature of what we're doing uh, that, and that, making that, me throw my dice around all over the place. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's just a little bit too early for me to have any particular wishes. improvement des- uh, wishes at this point. Okay. Uh, Kate, what about you? Stars and or wishes? Um, I mean, I'll echo everybody. I, I really like the interactive world building that we're doing. Uh, I'm having a blast playing a different archetype than my characters usually are. Uh, and then um, it's not much for which I, it, it, if any part of my backstory ends up coming into play, because I know you have limited real estate for that. I hope it's the, the sage mentors, because I think that A, they're fun, and B, they may have yeah, be a potentially useful tool to help us with our end goal uh, as a party. So, but something about your so, sage the sage me. mentors yeah i i put a sage little mentors. a bit on them to give them names and characterizations at the bottom of my backstory okay so, yeah so all right um sarah do you have any stars and wishes <laughs> stars i <laughs> love that kate is being a wild person and uh that greg is embracing also kind of being a little more out there than he has been in the past um, I really enjoyed their role play today. Um, so I applaud you guys. <laughs> um, wishes. I want to see our halfling get a piggyback ride from our tree. <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs> That's going to be their new mode of travel. Has it already been happening? Has he already been riding uh, on show? Well, it's a little early yet. We've only we've only known each other for like two days. So. <laughs> It's true. Um, You've only met a couple days ago. 
And I love the fact that we we're already talking about basically making a uh, traveling band. <laughs> <laughs> we are almost um, so going in that, that direction. That could be really fun too. Um, so those are my wishes. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, do people like the idea of doing stars and wishes at the end of each adventure? I think that's cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, at least I mean, every few adventures, but I'm okay with every adventure too. Yeah. It's fun. Okay. I mean, when I was when when I was DMing, that's something that I actually kind of wish that I had done. What are <laughs> I your tried stars to do something and wishes? A little... Yeah, that's true. What what are the DM star and wishes? Yeah. Uh, well, I was really looking forward to the idea of doing the cooperative, um, sort of collaborative world building. Uh, I was looking forward to that. I was looking forward to using, um, you know, random tables to create some of the world building as well. You know, I mean. Just like all of you, like this edition of uh, more improvised world building and collaborative world building, um, I- I'm really happy with the way that it performed and the fact that everybody is is echoing that idea it makes me feel really good. So I'm going to continue to move forward with this because we all seem to love it. Um, so um, wishes again. I think I echo the idea that I don't know that I have anything particularly right now. I mean, I would. I would like to be able to try to include people's backstories in some way. That's one of the things where, you know, I talked about in session zero how Space Furs went two years and eight months, and there was all this time to go through people's backstories, pull out stuff, put it in an adventure, and there was plenty of time. Whereas now, um, you know, I have sort of a general idea of, of what the beats throughout the campaign are going to be. And I want to go through and have a complete story and then let somebody else run. So uh, I like using backstories and knowing that I may have a harder time fitting them in in this campaign um, is a challenge. So I guess one of my wishes would be that I can find a way to incorporate some part of people's backgrounds without it um, stretching the campaign out like like 10 more adventures than I wanted it to be, but still make people feel like, oh, that was a part of my backstory. I want to see if I can find a good balance with that. So He's thinking about me. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if I can accomplish that and by the end of the campaign if people aren't telling me like you know one of my wishes for the campaign was that I had more of my backstory included then I will make a note of that and try to do better next time but, but that is that is my wish right now is to try to include some element of people's backstories in the adventures that doesn't make the campaign go two years and eight months <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> was that a little bit hard on you Chris? <laughs> uh, no no I mean I, I do think that DMs reach a certain point of fatigue after a while and that was the longest campaign that I ever ran and uh, I, I never really felt like you know it was it was really bad I just I just like probably as I started to go over two years I was like I would like to kind of complete the story at some point in the near future <laughs> I want to move on yeah yeah. I'm I would very like tired on. of Strax <laughs> <laughs> I get tired of John's character uh, well I will say that at least in my backstory I tried to make it so that it wasn't um, there was a central thing that was involved in it and not yeah. like a multitude yeah. of different things yeah yeah I appreciate that I mean I'm glad people didn't write like a 10 page backstory because there'd be no way I'd be able to do that <laughs> um, but okay, great. So I um, certainly didn't. Um, are we leveling this adventure, <laughs> by the way? Yes, you are all Ooh. second. You are all second level. Really? Yes. Yay. Yay. We go into Going into the fight. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Wait, oh, do we have to roll dice? Yeah. Dices. Are you, you going to say that we leveled as of like a um, long rest overnight for the sake of people who have spells and stuff like that? Or not that that's me, but well, I, I had planned on having you guys. I mean, I had hoped that we would. Um, get through the fight <laughs> um, but uh, why don't we hmm. would, people, would people be okay with staying first level until after the fight I'm yeah. with that. Yeah. that's the way it's supposed to be absolutely okay. yeah, uh, yeah we right. can uh, we take a break and do the leveling mid adventure next time yeah I, I mean you're just going to get the average hit points for your level um, I would probably look at your character and try to decide before next session which will be two weeks from now. Try to decide what your choices are going to be, so we don't have to eat up a lot of our a lot of our time with you guys trying to figure out what you want at that level. Um, you know, well, I've already got my character planned all the way out to level twenty, <laughs> even, even though That's I know we're not going to get that far. John. <laughs> okay, so so think about your choices for your second. I level mean, character. level two for. Oh, well, we don't need this on the podcast. <laughs> okay. She basically right. gets key, so this makes a difference. And so, uh, she gets. Key I stuff. just get action surge. So let's let's I just say get a ability <laughs> score uh, ability too. So 
Let, let's say goodnight to the listeners. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review anywhere this podcast can be found. Our social media links, plus additional content, can be found on our website at knightsofroleplay.com. Please tell your friends about Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast, and spread the word through social media. Your help and support are greatly appreciated. 